Our guest today is Danny Tarkanian, author of Rebel with a Cause, the true story of Jerry Tarkanian. Jerry, obviously, is Danny's dad, Hall of Fame coach, national championship winning coach. It's been 30 years since UNLV crushed Duke in the championship game to win the national title. Danny's book is out this year. What prompted you to write it? Well, I was writing it over a number of years, and I wanted to get a more accurate description of my father's career than what was reported when he coached. Uh, during the time he was coaching, the NC Twain controlled the media so strongly that uh, a lot of what my father did and the image he had wasn't accurate. And then I, with all the new stories that are coming out with the NC Twain issues, uh, you know, from the Miami, Florida investigation to the UCLA one where um, and now with the, the, the ones with the federal wiretaps, um, my father had made um, comments about the NC trade that now other schools are saying, wow, these things are happening to us. Maybe what Coach Tarkanian said was true. I thought it was important to get a book out now uh, with the timing so that they can see exactly what did happen and what is true. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with the musician Barbara Mandrell. One of her big hits oh, yeah. back in the 80s was, I was country when country wasn't cool. I always thought that Jerry Tarkanian was sort of like Barbara Mandrell because Jerry was exposing the NCAA when exposing the NCAA wasn't cool. Yeah, it was very uh, self-damaging. And uh, my dad had the courage to stand up and fight him, and he never backed down. Every other coach in the country knew what was going on, knew the same experiences my father had, uh, but they were too scared to fight the NCAA. It cost my dad dearly, you know, they forced him out at UNLV when he was 60, but uh, it was something I was very proud of him. Um, Ed O'Bannon had committed to UNLV along with Sean Tarver and his brother was coming too, until the NC, until the NC Troy uh, forced uh, UNLV to fire my father. It had nothing to do with the NC Troy investigations. Jason Kidd was coming to UNLV as a sophomore until the NC Troy uh, forced UNLV to fire my dad. Well, that's an interesting point about the school because I think it's a lot of fans know that the NCAA was constantly harassing him and ultimately your dad prevailed in court, proving that from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but what people don't realize, and maybe they should read your book for some of these fascinating details, is as he's fighting the NCAA, he's also fighting people from his own school's administration for orchestrating things against him. So seemingly people who would be on his side were actually conspiring against them. I, I found that to be fascinating. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in that book uh, explaining uh, the nuances about uh, my father's relationship with uh, the city and the school. And it's really, um, in a nutshell, basically, you know, my father came to UNLV. His image wasn't pristine. He had a tainted image from recruiting these poor inner city African-American kids that had gotten trouble off the court of one good students. And uh, he comes to a, a town that had a, just as bad a tainted image, if not worse, you know, Las Vegas, the mob, uh, prostitution. Well, in the late 80s, um, some of the casino owners wanted to change that image, and they wanted to change it to Las Vegas to be a resort destination, which it is now. Uh, and they felt my father's image of recruiting these type of kids and his fights with the NC Tway was bringing the image of Las Vegas down, which is almost laughable when you think about it. But because they felt that way, the people that were running the university, they did what they could uh, to force my father out. And they did it in a very uh, un underhanded manner in leaking false and misleading stories to the media. But I don't want that to be a focus of the book. I just wanted to see it, how so things change so fast with people and how there's still a vast majority of Las Vegas loved my father and supported him, but the power brokers uh, wanted the image changed and felt my father was bringing him down and they forced him out at 60 years old. Wow, and this is a pretty comprehensive book, but I'm sure there's still an editing process involved. Is there any um, great story that as they say in the film industry, was left on the cutting room floor that you could share with us here? Well, I cut a lot out. I cut about 40% of the book out just to get to the what we are now, which is still long. What I wanted to do for the book, and I think the readers that, that do read it, I really enjoy it, is I told stories about my father's recruiting battles with other schools. I talked about some of the other recruiting battles the schools had with my dad, too. I, I put in a lot of his one-line one -line jokes like, uh, the NC Tway got so mad at the University of Kentucky, they put uh, uh, Cleveland State on two more years probation. Or that my, when my father said, uh, when he, Greg Gorgian transferred to UNLV and was, drove up to our house in a white Fiat convertible paid for by Arizona State, my dad said he loved four-year transfers because they all came with their own car. 
you know, I, I put the funny stuff in there uh, that I think the, the readers are really going to enjoy. It's not, and that's what makes it different from a lot of other books. So this isn't just, hey, the nuts and bolts of a fight with the NC2A. It's the humor, the, the laughter, the camaraderie between the coaches. It's all put out in that book. You'll have to indulge me for a moment here because um, growing up, I grew up on the East Coast. I was a big Knicks fan. And in the late 70s, they drafted Glenn Gondrzyk from UNLV. Oh, and yeah. this guy really caught your eye, obviously. He would take a charge, dive for any loose ball, go head first into the press row, uh, yeah. hustling all the time. And as a little kid, I just identified with Glenn Gondrzyk so much. Please tell me you have a great Glenn Gondrzyk story that you can share with an old Glenn Gondrzyk fan. <laughs> well, Glenn took so many charges his senior year, he had to get an operation because he had a cyst on his chest from, from taking so many charges. Uh, the, the funniest story is he was very close with a, an official from his home area of Boulder, Colorado. Well, that official happened to referee the Final Four game at UNLV against North Carolina, which we lost by one. And the ref made a really bad call, and Gondo got mad at him, slammed the floor, and the ref gave him a technical. So the difference of that one-point loss was oh, Gondo's um, ref that it, from his own hometown that he always liked. Gondo never spoke with him the rest of his life. Oh, wow. Right. Gondo was the epitome of what it being a rebel is all about, though. He wasn't the most talented kid. He played harder than anybody. He was tougher than anybody. He was a rebel, and that's what all of us wanted to be. We wanted to be a rebel like him. Uh, I was looking at your dad's entry. He has an IMDB page, and there are three motion pictures, major motion pictures listed yeah. in that. Blue Chips, The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh, and Honeymoon in Vegas. Of those three, which is your favorite? Uh, no doubt, Honeymoon in Vegas. <laughs> I thought that was one of the most funny movies I'd ever watched. Uh, and my dad was funny um, um, at the uh, card table with uh, the crew. He was really funny. Cool. So ultimately, if there's a movie, maybe based on your book, that uh, gets produced, who plays your dad? We've been working on that, and we have some people that are trying to put it together. It may not be a, a two-hour movie. Instead, maybe a series that's on Netflix or Amazon, like they're doing now. And um, they've talked about to different people, but the one that they like the most, he hasn't shown interest in it yet, but it's Paul Giamatti. All right. That would be an excellent choice. Who would play you? <laughs> I don't know. Some young Robbie Benson. I don't know. Yeah, he was in a basketball movie back in the day, too. I'm trying to remember the name of it, right? One, it was a one, one on one. One on one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else that you would like us to know about this project or anything else you've got going on that uh, you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, you know, um, the big thing that I wanted to get across in the book was the kind of person my father was in his relationship. When he would start a coaching, the, all the, the, his colleagues would motivate players by yelling and screaming at them and belittling players. My dad was never like that. He encouraged them through sarcasm and wit. And I wrote about one story when I was playing for him in 1982-83. We were number one in the country, and he didn't think we were playing hard enough in practice. So he called the team in the huddle, and he said, you guys are all a bunch of bandits. Next time you pick up a scholarship check, wear a mask and gun because you're robbing the university. You know, we were scared to death by the way he said it, but it was so funny. We wanted to laugh, but we went out there and played harder than anybody. So, you know, it's that kind of personality that I had that I just respect so much more. It was the way he was able to relate with people. And he related with kids, not only the ones that played for him, his colleagues, uh, boosters. He'd be at a bar and a drunk would come up to him and slobbering all over him, telling him, coach, you should do this, you should do that, and the team would win. And my, my dad would say, is that right? Is that right? Yeah, I'll do that. And the guy would leave thinking he told Coach Tark how to coach and felt great about him. My dad never listened to him. <laughs> well, that's a huge part of coaching is being able to connect, relate, communicate with people. And like you yes. said, his method may have been ahead of his time because we hear now about how, you know, the screaming and acting like a maniac in the long yeah. run doesn't produce the dividends you actually want. Nope, it's all changed the way my dad was coaching. Great, well, thanks so much for joining us here today. Once again, the book is Rebel With A Cause, the true story of Jerry Tarkanian. Our guest today has been Danny Tarkanian. Thanks for joining us, Danny. Thank you, I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much.